Hi everyone, yeah, I'm Timo. I'm a software engineer in the Zurich office in Switzerland, and I'm presenting uh, Brain to Music on behalf of the team. The whole thing started earlier this year um, when we released our paper on MusicLM, this is our music generation model. I was just curious actually how many of you have heard of MusicLM uh, sometime. Can you raise your hand? Like, ah, oh, cool. Okay, it's a few. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll show real quick what it does. It's, it's a music generation model um, that takes text as input and then outputs uh, music that kind of corresponds to the, the text you give it. So here's the video that's demoing um, how it works. Um, it's actually a page that's accessible on, in the AI test kitchen, so it's kind of open to the public. Um, yeah, and you see like the, I'm entering this prompt here, chill background music to hear uh, while walking through New York City streets in the evening. And I hope you can hear it, uh, what it generates. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what we, um, what we built early this year, and then um, it received some attention and was cool, and, and we're still working on this, like this is the sole focus of the team at this point. Um, and around the same time, actually a month later in February, um, this, this paper, um, I'm just labeling this as brain to, brain to image. The actual title of the paper, I have to read off quickly, is High Resolution Image Reconstruction with Latent Diffusion Models from Human Brain Activity. This one was just shared in our internal chat. We were like, oh cool, like, looks like a cool piece of work, and, What's happening there is that um, Yu Takagi and Shinji Nishimoto, these are two professors who wrote this paper, they um, presented people in an MRI machine with uh, images. So you're just in there, you know, and, and, and instead of scanning your knee, um, the thing is scanning your brain activity. And it's doing this while you look at images that are presented here at the top. Um, and then later they use the brain activity that's recorded to reconstruct the images that you saw. And you see in the bottom row the image reconstructions and this was kind of you know, enabled by really capable image generation models, the stable diffusion one in that case, coming into the hands of the neuroscientists. Um, and we saw this and found it really cool, and we thought, you know, um, why not like, tr try the same thing for music, where you'd have music at the top and then m music reconstructions at the bottom. And we just sent them an email, and that's how the collaboration started and, and became like a little side project for a few months. And yeah, all the things you'd need in, in order to do that is a data set that's uh, collected of people going into the MRI machine, that's actually the one that was used here, um, to collect the, the data of participants. Um, go in there, listen to music, so there are some MRI compatible headphones that you can put on, collect the data, and it turns out there was actually already open data sets available um, exactly of that kind. You know, like four, four participants, uh, 540 music clips, 15 seconds each, that's like the order of magnitude that you're talking about there. And the second thing you'd need is the really um, yeah, potent music decoder model, music LMNR case. Um, so, so yeah, we brought these two things together and then um, make, made that project happen. And uh, now we can kind of look at the, the results of the decoding a little bit. Um, you, you can think of this, it's now exactly the same, analogous to the image uh, reconstruct we saw, you know, here on the left, I just put this as a reference. So you get the idea, you have at the top the stimulus, that's what the people heard while they were in the MRI machine. And then at the bottom, the reconstruction, that's the output of our music LM model. We can just listen to the first example here of, of the stimulus. I told them local pickers I done come to capture music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the reconstruction, you can pay attention to how it sounds a little bit similar. So, like, like the expectations, you know, need to be managed a little bit there in, in terms of how, how well you can reconstruct things. The, the fMRI scans, they have a temporal resolution of 1.5 seconds. So you can't expect, you know, the exact beats or, or melody to match 100%. But um, for example, the, the vocal, vocals, like are vocals present or not? What's the overall genre? Um, how does the speaker's, uh, the singer's voice sound? You know, that kind of thing is, is roughly resembled. Um, so yeah, we can listen to one more example and, and you can pay attention to just like how these high level things are kind of matching. Yeah. And then the reconstruction for that. Yeah, so it's, it's like the, the, the first, work of that kind, you know, using fMRI, um, 
again, just kind of made possible because the music generation models became good enough to do the, the decoding. Um, and of course, a lot of that is hallucinated, right, by the model, so, so the information extracted uh, doesn't contain enough, and then the model just makes sure that a reasonable sounding song comes out. I mean, if this is reasonable sounding, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> keep going. Um, and, and then there's also the, the neuroscience part of the paper, you know, um, I said I'm a software engineer, not neuroscientist, um, that the, the guys um, took care of, Yu Takagi especially, um, and in that case, it's, it's going kind of the opposite direction. You know, instead of saying you, you try to um, take the brain activity and then convert it into music, you um, take some representation of the music and see which parts of the brain are correlating with it. And then you get this kind of uh, heat map where you can see what's, what's like uh, behaving the same way in the brain as, as the music features. Um, and we did that in, in this particular figure. The, the actual result section is bigger, of course, um, for two types of features that you can extract from music. One is extracted based on the raw audio signal of the music, and the other one is um, computed, the other feature is computed based on a text description of the music. So imagine like some text caption that says, you know, it's a, a female vocals with a lot of energy, some beat in the background, the actual text, and then you compute an embedding of the text and then see what parts of the brain are correlated with that text description. Um, and you get that kind of heat map and can see, you know, which, which parts are more um, capturing these like high level semantics, which are more correlated with um, the, the low level acoustic details. So that's the, the closing slide, it's the paper we wrote about this. You can check it out. There's also a little demo page. Um, I just wanted to put all the authors here wants to give credit to the whole team. Um, yeah, and we can take some questions. And also we have a booth later, like you can chat about the music generation model or, or this project. The booth is, should be over there somewhere. Yeah, thank you.